CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on April 8th, 2024. I am Select Board Chair Eric Hilmuth for about another four minutes. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. I will now confirm that all members and staff are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan. Affirmative. John Hurd. Yes. Steve DeCourcy. Yes. Leonard Diggins. Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Town Manager, let me move my microphone. Town Manager Jim Feeney. Yes. Town Council Michael Cunningham. Yes. Select Board Administrator Ashley Marr. Yes. Mr. Diggins, can you hear each of the staff? I can hear everyone just fine. Thanks for checking, Mr. Chair. You're very welcome. Before we begin, be begin please note the following. This meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask that you provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and people watching on ATMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. If technical difficulties severed the remote connection to one or more participants and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable period of time are unsuccessful, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair, provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confirmation email to use as a backup audio connection to the meeting if necessary. There will be the several opportunities for public comment tonight, or at least one during a Warren article hearing. Um, if you are attending by Zoom and want to participate at that time, please raise your hand in Zoom when the chair announces that public comment is open. If you do not know how to raise your hand in Zoom, now would be an excellent time to Google for how to do so. And finally, because one or more select board members are participating remotely, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. Our first item of business is the organizational meeting for the purpose of electing a chair and vice chair. I now turn the chairing of the meeting over to town council attorney Mike Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening. Michael Cunningham, town council. And at this stage in the agenda, would like to accept nominations for select board chair. Ms. Mahan. I'd like to nominate Mr. DeCourcy as select board chair. Is there a second? Second. Mrs. Mahan? I'd like to close nominations. Second. On a motion to nominate. To close. To, cl to close uh, nomination period. Is there. Second. All those in favor? I guess we Aye. get a call, roll call vote because it's a hybrid. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. The nomination period is closed at this point with a. Nomination to, for Mr. DeCourcy to serve as chair that has been seconded and offered by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. Hurd. Um, take a roll call. Any discussion by the board? Hearing none, take a vote. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. DeGorsons? Mr. Diggins? <laughs> yes. Congratulations, Mr. DeCourcy, chair of the select board. We should have music for this. <laughs> my nephew, my grandson Nick is the singer. He would be great at this. A little bit, a little bit smaller desk here. Um, thank you, colleagues, for for your uh, for your confidence in the, uh, selecting me as chair this year. It's an honor to serve again. Um, as your chair. And before I start, I, I again want to um, thank Mr. Helmuth for his uh, excellent service this past year as chairman. Thank you, sir. And congratulations to both Mr. Helmuth and Mr. Hurd on your reelection on Saturday. It's a shock. Mr. Mr. Chair, if I may, I can say as someone who had the privilege uh, to serve my first year under your guidance as chair, it is great to have you back in that role. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, well, with that, we'll move on to opening, opening nominations for vice chair. Motion to open nomination for vice chair. Is there a second? Second. Okay. 
Uh, motion has been made and second. Any discussion? Motions made and seconded for opening nominations for vice chair. Um, Attorney Cunningham? Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Five zero vote. All right, I'll accept nominations now. Mr. Hurd? I move to nominate um, Mrs. Mahan as vice chair. So second? Second. Discussion? Okay, motion has been made and seconded to nominate Mrs. Mahan. Motion Turn. to close. Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. We have the motion to close nominations. I'll second that. Okay. Um, motion has been made and seconded to close nominations. Attorney Cunningham. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Closed. Okay. And, Thank you. And on the motion for Mrs. Mahan as vice chair, Attorney Cunningham. Motion to uh, have Mrs. Mahan serve as vice chair. It's been made and seconded. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. 5 0 vote. Congratulations, Mrs. Mahan. to his seat. I hope he sees yes. it. Uh -huh. Yes. That, that, hey, You've that's lost the weight. Seat. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the seat I want. You know? <laughs> so. Thank you. Okay, well, congratulations, <laughs> Mrs. Mahan. Okay, moving on for the agenda, we are now on the consent agenda. It's items three through seven, and I will read them off in order. Item three, celebrating Arlington Stories banner design. Uh, item four, outdoor restaurant and retail permit application, uh, Kilos Taqueria. Uh, number five, a request for a contractor drain layer license, Travis Trott, Boston Pipeline Company. Item six, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on April 27th at the Whittemore Robbins House. Item seven, a request for a one-day beer and li wine license on May 3rd at the First Parish Church uh, for the Taste of First Parish Arlington event. Do we have any um, motions, comments from members of the board? No Second, is there a second? Second that. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmuth to approve the consent agenda, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 5 0 vote. Thank you. Okay. Item 8, under licenses and permits for approval, common vitular license. Greek Habits by Eva, 478 Massachusetts Avenue, Theodora Nikolaikos. Um, if you're in, in the chambers, if you want to come up, please. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll come right up to the table. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Um, we have the application, but if you could tell us a little bit about your business and, and um, what, uh, um, what, what you put in the application and, and what your business will be if, if approved. Okay. Um, can uh, my sister come with me so she can help me with my English? Sure, uh, absolutely. Come. Yeah. Um, I'm Eva. Good. And th thank you for coming. Um, so, um, can she speak for me? Sure. Uh, so we want to open a Greek pastry shop in uh, the 478 Masav in Arlington. Uh, I myself have had a bakery, Greek pastry shop as well, for the past eight years in Pibri. We do wholesale and retail, and uh, as known as Eva's Pastries, and I had it with my ex-partner. So now I have divided with my ex-partner and opened new with my sister. Now th this is the location they're going to have. They're not going to be producing out of there. They're going to be selling the pastries. I'm going to be producing out of Peabody uh, at a new location. And um, we want to see if you guys would enjoy that. Right. 
All right. Thank, thank you very much. I actually was going by the, the location. Yes, it's at the corner of Mass Ave and Swan Place, and the signage looks great. So um, I will now turn it over to the board for any questions, motions, comments. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I would first like to move approval subject to all conditions contained therein. And um, I know you and your sister are probably aware that th there are four, I think, four departments in the town that have conditions to get your occupancy permit and some other things that um, should be, I shouldn't say easy, but um, something that you have to do to get 100% good to go. Yeah. But you're definitely aware of that. And I, I, I want to thank you and your sister for choosing here in Arlington. Um, this will be most recently the second Greek themed uh, yeah. business yeah. Uh, opening here in Arlington, which is really exciting. Um, I, I look, certainly look forward to uh, not only reading about the great reviews I know you're going to receive because thankfully Arlington, new businesses that have come in have done very, very well. Yes. Um, and I like to think it's the applicant coming in and whatever little the town manager and department heads do. But I know how tough it is in the food industry, how hard that is. And I know how important family is. Mm -hmm. Like your sister, a lot of the food businesses are really family oriented. And if they're not related by blood, they get related by work. Um, so uh, I just want to thank you in advance for doing that. And um, as I said, subject to these conditions, and as always, the select board office is, is a resource to you if you should need any help along the way. So we good luck and I, I look forward to seeing you all. Go sisters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. I second the motion. Thank you for choosing Arlington. <clears throat> My office is in Arlington Center, so always looking for a nice a new lunch spot. So <laughs> we'll, uh, I'll look forward to when you guys open. So good. thank you, Mr. Hurd. Any other comments? Okay, so a motion for favorable action by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 5 0 vote. Good. Congratulations. And this Greek Thank Habits you. by Ava, I just want to get the name right. Okay, yes. good. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, also under licenses and permits, item nine for approval public entertainment license and change of hours, Zamza, 435, 434 to 436 Massachusetts Avenue. Um, if the applicants are here, if they want to come up. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, if you could uh, my name is Ravi. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate both of you for being selected. Oh, no, go right ahead. If you want to introduce yourself and just tell us about the application. I'm, I'm, I'm a Ravi Rajkarnika. Um, uh, I'm a chef manager of the Zomsa restaurant. And um, we applied for the entertainment license, license to extend our hour till midnight. The reason why we did is um, in an, our restaurant, we'd like to have a Nepali music people promote Nepali, the local bands from the, all over the states, along with from Nepal bring it over here and then introduce here. And also to serve the local people till midnight, if we get a chance, we'd be very grateful to get the extended hour and entertainment license. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll turn to the board. Oh. Mrs. Mahan. Uh, first I'll move approval. Um, and I know this is gonna add to your business. I have three grandsons who are half Nepalese, so. Mm -hmm. I am familiar with the music. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, move approval subject to the conditions contained therein. There are four town departments, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you, you're aware of, just that have outlined okay. you know, mm -hmm. how to uh, continue to operate your business there. And um, the, the only other thing I would say is um, it shouldn't be an issue with where your location is, but, but um, if the music is also going to go to midnight, um, you might, you know, just make sure it stays contained within mm -hmm. your building, your establishment. Yeah. Um, just, you know, for neighbors, because Arlington is so close, so, mm -hmm. so condensed. Um, but I think it's a great idea. I, I certainly look forward to it. And I would like to also uh, tell that we did uh, the soundproof in, in a oh. wall. Okay. 
So it's not going to, first of all, the building doesn't have any um, closed houses or any disturbance is going to be around. And we did a soundproof. So, so it's you're not going to be that loud. You're an enemy. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even need me on this. You're, you know what you're doing. So, And I wish you nothing but good luck and success. And we're always here if you need any help on anything. Thank you very much. And Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. I gladly second that, and I'm glad that uh, things are going well enough that you wanted to do some more business. So I'm glad to hear about the soundproofing. That was a good, a good idea, and uh, look forward to your continued success. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Uh, uh, Mr. Dickens? Oh, no. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm just happy. To, uh, I'm happy to. Uh, I will happily vote uh, approval. Yeah, we do, we still haven't voted yet, so oh, okay. if, just in case there are sorry. questions, no problem. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mr. Diggins. Oh, oh no, problem. no problem. I thought something was wrong on my end. You know, so now I'm just saying I'm going to be happy to vote approval on this. I'm happy to see uh, something that uh, will make Arlington Center more of a destination need. And, and I'm looking forward to um, experiencing the, the cuisine, although it'll be way before midnight when I'm there eating. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. And I'm happy to support this as well. So on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Helmuth for approval of the application, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 5 0 vote. Okay. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next item 10 uh, Warren article hearings, articles for review. Uh, we just have one this evening, which is Article 20, Home Rule Legislation for Town Clerk. Before I turn it over to the um, town manager, I do want to say we. At our meeting last week, we tabled this until after the election on Saturday. And on question one, I note that the, um, the referendum question passed by 58% to 42%. Actually, before I do that, did you want to say something, Mr. Allen? I, I, you read my mind, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Um, due to my employment by the state legislature, I am required to recuse myself because this is a home rule petition for the legislature. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. And so as I was saying, it, the referendum was successful. 58% voted in favor of um, changing the clerk from an elected position to an appointed position. We wanted to allow the voters um, to, to um, make that decision over the weekend. They, they have. Um, so in light of that, I, I, we did receive some new information from Attorney Cunningham. I don't know if Mr. Feeney or Attorney Cunningham would like to start us off here. Uh, Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the uh, summary of the events that have transpired prior to this evening. And I'd like to thank uh, both Town Council Mike Cunningham and Deputy Town Council uh, Jackman Munson for uh, turning around this updated memo so quickly in light of the election results. Uh, but before the board this evening for consideration is uh, specific language amending the Town Manager Act. Uh, to codify the change of the uh, clerk position from one that is elected to one that will now be uh, appointed should the uh, board and town meeting see fit. So the amendment language uh, proposed in the memo the board received uh, closely follows that that has been used previously. Uh, in other words, the model that was developed in 2018 for the position of the comptroller and then used again in 2019 for the position of treasurer. Uh, this language follows uh, those two prior conversions uh, almost to a T with respect to the, uh, the strikethroughs and additions uh, made to the language of the Town Manager Act. So I think just generally speaking, the duties and obligations of the position will remain exactly the same. What changes is the appointment and removal process for the town clerk position. So in the uh, proposal before the board, the clerk would now become a town manager appointment uh, as the town manager act spells out based on merit and fitness alone and that appointment would be subject to confirmation by this board. Uh, and then removal would be a similar process, a recommendation by the town manager subject to the uh, ultimate approval of the select board so that changes as it is currently, they would be subject to a recall election when it's an elected office. And then finally, with respect to the timeline for these proposed changes, I just want to note as written, 
Uh, the current elected town clerk would uh, finish her duly elected term, which expires in April 2026. Uh, at that point, an appointment process would be uh, instituted. And I think that's, uh, you know, barring any questions, that's the information I wanted to add this evening. Great. Thank, thank you, Mr. Feeney. Uh, before, this is a public hearing, but before we do that, I turn to board members if there are any questions uh, in advance of a potential uh, motion. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, most of the questions, uh, Attorney Cunningham and Munson and the town manager have answered for me. Uh, the only question that stays out there is as outlined in the memo regarding what we ultimately, if we pass it and then town meeting passes it, gets sent to the legislature. There were a few items, um, uh, items of suggestion that um, either this board, my first question would be, on those items of suggestion to clarify, to go along with the legislation in the State House so it has the best chance of not coming back. And correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm misreading anything that's in here, um, has to do with um, uh, whether, well, first off, is that something this board should discuss or should town meeting, we vote on it, town meeting votes on it, and then the town manager regarding, is it a defined term? regarding is an independent authority and regarding um, how we, how the manager, ultimately, I would assume, uh, determines how this position should be classified. So is that something that this board should discuss and include in our vote, or I'm putting the cart before the horse? That would be my question. Okay. I don't know if you have any advice on that. I, well, I'd like to ask Attorney Cunningham if he has any, any thoughts. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Yes, that would be something appropriate for this board to discuss if it so chose to deal with it this time, to send something forward to town meeting that the board feels accurately and appropriately addresses that issue if it's not already addressed well enough in the draft motion. I guess I, I would ask you, Mr. Chair, if maybe after you have the public hearing that this issue comes back, I'd be interested in what Mr. Feeney has um, since ultimately he'd be, he'd be the appointing authority, but I think we should clarify those three issues, and I'll let you handle that. Okay. All thank right. You. Thank, thank, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Any other questions from board members? Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to be heard on this warrant article? Anybody on Zoom? No. Okay. All right. So no one is. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Ms. Mart. So I will return to to Mr. Feeney. Um, if, if you could respond to, to Mrs. Mahan's question. Um. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the question, Mrs. Mahan. As proposed, the uh, language presented does not uh, call for a specific term of a specific length, so it would be uh, serving at the pleasure of the appointing authority, as is the case for all other appointments under the town manager. And then uh, the other two issues, if, if we should not include that in our vote tonight, that's fine, but I've got the sense that we should mm -hmm. um, on how you would uh, classify this position in the independent authority, and if I'm missing anything else. And then, so one other item uh, Mrs. Mahan has listed was the effective date, which was noted as, and I, you know, we'll add a caveat here, is at the conclusion of the current elected clerk's term, which is April 2026, or upon early vacancy of the term, should for any reason uh, the, the clerk decide to vacate that term. And then uh, with respect to the duties and obligations, as I understand it, those are well uh, codified within uh, the Mass General Laws and are not currently codified anywhere uh, within the Town Manager Act, but would also ask Town Council to weigh in if there's something I'm missing. Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, Mr. Feeney has, has said, said it out correctly that those duties are, are codified in our general laws, but I just would no, just highlight section two of the draft motion that talks about um, the incumbent elected to the office and shall continue to hold that office until the term expires or the clerk um, resigns. So just to protect the will of the voters, as you know, our town clerk was elected, um, 
this, the town manager's authority under this act to appoint somebody pursuant to the select board's approval would not uh, affect that individual's term. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Um, and, and I will note when we went through this several years ago with the treasurer's position, um, Mr. Carmen was elected as treasurer. Um, that began the conversion process to, to an appointed treasurer. He did not serve his entire term. He resigned during the term, and then in, in the fall of 2018, Ms. Marshall was hired. But again, I believe it was similar language in, in that um, act that the, or, or home rule petition that we had. Um, so any other questions, comments, motions? Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'd like to move approval um, with the inclusion of that uh, this position will serve at the direction of the appointing authority and that uh, this position will become in effect in April of 2026 or if there's an early vacancy. And then include uh, the third part, all the other parameters outlined in section two as Attorney Cunningham cited. <coughs> Okay, thank you. And, and just for clarification, are, are, would we do that maybe through the comment as opposed to in, in the, the actual, okay, yeah. Thank you. And do I'll we, second. So, okay, thank you, Mr. Erd. And if you have a comment. Do we do that? Yeah, we already did that. Oh, all right. Yeah, no, no one wanted to speak on it. Okay, second by Mr. Erd. Any further comment? Okay, I don't see anything from Mr. Diggins. Um, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just before we proceed, I want to make sure I have uh, appropriately addressed Mrs. Mahan's concerns. So we're not, there'll be no revision of the draft motion. It's just that your concerns will be addressed, addressed in a comment that will be added. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan, for the, the good su suggestions. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. So on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, uh, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chikorsi? Yes. 4-0 four four vote with Mr. Helmuth uh, recusing himself. Okay, and Mr. Helmuth can rejoin us now. The next item under traffic rules and orders, item 11, uh, discussion on future select board meetings. And I believe at our, either our last meeting or two meetings ago, we, we are going to have a meeting on April 17th. Um, we also will be here for the first night of town meeting on April 24th, and we held off on a discussion on May and June. So I'm going to suggest a couple dates and ask board members um, if, if they're available or if they have a, a, the preference. So for May, uh, I did speak with Ms. Maher, and we talked about May 6th and May 20th. Um, how does that look? Those are both Mondays. Okay. And in June... Um, and, and maybe a question for Mr. Feeney on this too. We either can do it the 3rd and 17th or 10th and 24th. I'm just wondering if the second meeting is a little bit closer to the end of the fiscal year in case there's something that needs to be done, if that would be preferable uh, doing a 10th and 24th. At first glance, the 10th and 24th seems. Okay. Okay. Is there any... Any discussion on this? Does that work for everybody? Probably 10th and 24th. 10th and 24th? Okay. And I don't, we didn't get into July. I don't know if you want to, we'd have one meeting in July and one in August. Mr. Diggins. Yes. I mean, so thinking about July and August, I mean, I also want to ask if we are considering um, doing uh, um, maybe goals uh, meeting at some point this summer? Yes. Um, well, we are, we'd like to do that. And I, I'm just trying to think when we, um, you know, Mr. Feeney's start date was in August. August. August yeah, so I think maybe in August it, it would be appropriate. I want to talk to Mr. Feeney because in terms of the goals, he starts that process and um, just talk about that. But that would be a possibility um, probably for August. Yeah, just, just want to see if we're thinking about it and when, you know. So didn't want to wait too late because if we wanted to go for July and we waited until June uh, to think about it, it might be too late to even think about on um, July at that point. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. And I don't know if we want to come back and talk about July and August. It's a little I too early do. maybe to... I'd come back in when we're a little clearer on what our July and August look like. Okay. <laughs> Same. <laughs> All right. That's fine. All right. So, um, Mrs. Mahan. Just one point. Um, for the, possibly for the May meetings, 
and I hope, please, Lord, um, not the June meeting, but it will be subject to, uh, I guess, the vote by town meeting and or the Warren article. And I'm, I'm going to assume, and it's at the chair's discretion, that if town meeting should move to 7.30 or 7, that that would push us back accordingly an hour. So just we have that in our minds at that, or whatever the chairman determines. If, if you see an agenda that we can get it done in 30 minutes, but just so that we have in our head that there's the potential of a, from now on, if town meeting time, start, time changes, we could be 636, whatever you determine. Okay, yeah, depending on the size of the okay. agenda. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so that covers. Not that that should influence your vote individually as a town meeting member. You vote what you want. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Mrs. Vaughn. That's right. Uh, okay, so with that, that's just a discussion. It doesn't require a vote of the board. Um, item 12, fossil. Well, actually, oh, I'm Mr. sorry, Chair, Mr. Diggins. Sorry. No problem, no, you didn't see my hand, you know, so, but we're, uh, we, Mr. Mahab was talking about the, the time, I mean, I know there is that article that does discuss um, uh, time, I mean, it's the start time, and I know that we said that we will report, so, so I don't know if that will wait as long as May 6th, I mean, but I, I suppose at any point in time, we can say we're going to have another meeting as long as we give the public 48 hours notice. I'm anticipating that we'll want to have a discussion um, to yeah. report back to town meeting. Well, yeah, I, and I, I think, Mr. Diggins, that that will probably be at one of our meetings before a town meeting session. I think we want to go at least to the first session of town meeting and try to work out a mechanism with the moderator to receive some feedback, hear that feedback, hear from the town meeting procedures committee, committee and then have a discussion among ourselves in terms of what our recommendation is. Right. So it will be after right. the first night of town meeting and maybe before May 6th. Yeah, that's what uh, I was no thinking. No later than May be. 6th, though. Right, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking it might be before uh, May 6th. So if nothing else, maybe we should just, even if we don't schedule it, just kind of keep our calendars a little clear. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, okay, and with that, I will move on to item 12, the fossil fuel-free bylaw waiver guidance. Uh, Talia Fox, sustainability manager. Uh, good evening, Ms. Fox. Good evening. Thank you all for your time, as usual. Um, I'm here to discuss the draft guidelines for the prescription of waivers under the fossil fuel free bylaw, which the select board will need to adopt by May 21st of this year, which is the date that the fossil fuel free bylaw takes effect. The goal of our conversation today will be to determine what, if any, changes to make to the draft guidelines that were provided with the meeting materials um, prior to the select board's adoption of the guidelines. That's okay. Yeah, we might just have a little delay in terms of when the presentation is coming up. Okay. Okay. Um, and you can, great, next slide, great. Uh, as, a refresh, as a refresher, the fossil fuel free bylaw prohibits the installation of new fossil fuel piping and appliances in new construction and major renovation projects in town. Exemptions do exist for a number of cases, including uh, cases like hot, hot water for large buildings, backup generators, repair of unsafe piping, and more listed on this slide. The bylaw also has provision for, has a provision for waivers and appeals. Next slide, please. The bylaw does specify that the select board is to provide guidance regarding the granting of waivers prior to the effective date of the bylaw, which as I mentioned is May 21st of this year, 90 days following DOER's notification of the town's acceptance into the fossil fuel free demonstration program. The bylaw specifies that waivers can be granted where compliance with the bylaw renders a project uh, commercially renders a project financially infeasible or impractical to implement. And the bylaw, next slide please. The bylaw further says that compliance with the bylaw is considered financially infeasible if as a result of factors beyond the project proponent's control, the cost including subsidies, so any credits or rebates, would make the project commercially unviable and or if technological factors technological or other factors would make the project unsuitable for its intended purpose. Next slide, please. The proposed guidelines included with the materials for today's meeting effectively build on this framework to say what project proponents must provide for documentation. Specifically, for waivers on the basis of financial infeasibility, applicants must provide a detailed cost comparison that includes available rebates and credits. They must also provide a narrative describing the factors that make the project commercially unviable due to additional cost or delays associated with fossil fuel free equipment 
compared to the fossil fuel alternatives, or any electrical service upgrade costs or delays required as a result of the introduction of the fossil fuel free equipment that would render the project commercially unviable. Next slide, please. For waivers on the basis of impracticability, applicants must describe how the conditions at the site render installation of a particular technology unviable or how the nature of the use requires specialty fossil fuel equipment. Next slide, please. The draft guidelines also reiterate the responsibilities in the bylaw with regard to waivers and appeals, specifically that the building inspector ultimately grants the waiver and the town manager hears appeals. And it says that the way to request a waiver will be via a form on the OpenGov portal. So before I close and we discuss this, I just want to remind the board that this is a pilot program and we are meant to learn and adjust accordingly. And based on our learnings, we may want to modify the guidelines, guidelines as, as they are adopted or as they will be adopted. And that would be welcome. That would be absolutely welcome. Um, and I also want to mention that town council has rightly pointed out that there are some areas in the guidelines where we reference actual text of the bylaw, and so we'll be sure to add those references to the bylaw itself. Um, and, and with that, I'd just like to thank the board and look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Um, before I turn to the board, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to thank Ms. Fox for her usual thoroughness and uh, expertise on this and work on this. I did note that, yeah, I think a citation to Section E of the bylaw would be helpful for waiver applicants. But other than that, I think the waiver um, form uh, provides potential applicants with some clear guidance about how they're go to go about proceeding with a request for a waiver. And although it is a pilot program, I think it's a, it's a very um, clear and concise waiver form that permits the public uh, adequate notice of how they pursue this. Great. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. And, and before I turn to the board, just a question for Ms. Fox. I know you have the draft guidance here on, on or the draft document. Are you looking for fee just feedback from us tonight, not a vote on the final document? or, or I think it's, it's um, yeah, go for it. I'm sorry, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think, I think the, the board could go either direction if the board had concerns about how it's currently crafted and wanted to make suggested changes, those could be taken into account. And there is time to bring it back to the board uh, for, for further consideration before the effective date. Uh, certainly would have a meeting to do that. If the board were inclined to vote acceptance of this draft waiver proposal, this waiver form, it could also take that action. OK, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Um, so with that, I will turn to the board for any questions, uh, comments? Mrs. Mahan. So I just have a housekeeping question and just where we're, we're start, starting out on this and I think it's sort of inherent or implied um, in the draft document as well as, well mostly in the draft document, but I just want to clarify in terms of once the language is voted and the bylaw waiver guidance document is the framework in effect subject to any changes in, in the future. Um, where the uh, town manager and the building inspector seem to be the two offices uh, in the driver's seat. Um, just a housekeeping question. In terms of a, a keeper of the record, a, a custodian, in terms of any official records that should come out of this process, filing the waiver, any notices that need to go out, any deci appeal decisions rendered, would that be the building inspector, the town manager, or the planning department? It's just a housekeeping question. I, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Fox can correct me if she thinks that, the, that it may go a different direction, but I would envision a scenario where the planning department would house most of the documents, but any documents related to appeal, if the building inspector would hear that portion, the building inspector may have his own set of documents. And then if the, they went to a further appeal and went to the town manager's office, the town manager could also have some, some materials related to a particular uh, appeal. Uh, I don't know if they'd necessarily exist in one particular place, but there would be one file or one appeal process. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, any other questions? Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Fox. How in, in re reading the guidelines, which you know, look fine to me, um, the one area that gives me a little bit of pause, given that we want the presumption to be strongly in favor of, of, of uh, a fossil fuel construction, 
when possible, is a judgment call that someone has to make that the project is commercially unviable. So I don't want this to be just that the developer is going to make less profit, you know, because obviously you can make more profit, and we suspect that might be mildly the case based on the data that you've given us in the past. How will the building inspector make that call based on this guidance? And do you think that it's sufficient? Thank you. Thanks. That's a great question and something that um, the Clean Energy Future Committee did discuss. Um, we were initially considering some more specific components of this guidance that alluded to percentages of profit, um, specific cost thresholds, and ultimately um, determined that we wanted to keep it a little broader to start intentionally uh, so that these guidelines could evolve um, as we see what projects are applying for waivers. I acknowledge that there is a little bit of openness here. I think commercially inviable means the project cannot proceed, um, at least that, that is sort of my, that's how I envisioned it. If, if perhaps it's, it makes sense to make that more specific or, or more clear um, in the, the text of the guidelines themselves, I can certainly do that. Um, I'd welcome also feedback on, on perhaps how, how, um, how to, to make that clear. But I, I acknowledge that it is, there is some amount of discretion intentionally, and that was the guidance I received from the CEFC, was to keep things a bit broader for, to start. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense, and I, I'm mindful of what you said at the outset, that this is the pilot, and we're supposed to learn in the pilot. Um, and I think you said something, actually, that seemed useful to me, um, and, and that is, if there is a commonly accepted definition of unviable, meaning mm. that it doesn't pencil out, and that the you know, developer is going to lose money, then, of course, we would be reasonable to grant a waiver. I think it's just what's important to me is that that is understood to mean that um, or something close to that, you know, and not just, well, you know, a, a reduction in the profit margin. Um, and Mr. Chair, I think you're, uh, through you, perhaps, I think the town manager might have a comment on my question as well. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mr. Mr. Feeney? Sure. What, one thing I wanted to ask, thank you, Mr. Chair, is that, you know, with respect to rebates and credits, that landscape is frequently changing. So with respect to Ms. Fox's earlier point about not pegging a particular percentage or threshold value could be helpful to avoid doing so given that that uh, landscape with respect to either state or federal rebates incentives uh, is constantly changing. So I just wanted to add that. Thank, thank you, Mr. Feeney. And, and I will note, you'd asked about different contexts. I know in the comprehensive permit, permit excuse me, context, there is a, a viability, commercial viability, if, if there's a condition imposed, I'm not suggesting that's what we follow here, but that's, that's one that comes to mind um, that, that maybe there, there's something helpful there, um, but um, that, that, that's the only one. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Yeah, I did, you know, we've had a number of discussions about this program. I mean, for me, in, in the residential sphere, I don't think, I think it's a hard hurdle. I think the waiver programs, when we had talked about this, it, like, you know, you have a new mixed-use property and you want to put a restaurant in, and that's, I think in the commercial setting, the waivers become a lot more prevalent, where, you know, you know, I know there's new technology evolving with cooking appliances and whatnot, but I think for a, most restaurants can't really operate without, you know, some form of fossil fuel cooking apparatus. So I mean, I th I see the waiver being played a little more, a lot more in the commercial setting, and not that we're developing tons of new commercial space in Arlington, but the hope is that we will with some with some of the the uh, recent zoning changes that we've instituted. Um, and so I mean, that's more where I see that, and you know, I think there's some value to the broader definition to start. So it's. We're not shutting somebody out. Um, I, I think it's it's easier to learn to say, all right, you know, we got to tighten this language because there's, you know, a few too many people that slip through the cracks that we, we could that we really don't want to have this new infrastructure. I think that's an easier fix than you know a year of telling people no to certain things that you know we want in town. So. Okay. Thank, thank, 
Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I just have one um, comment that's is separate from, from what, what you just mentioned, but just on the appeal process. And I'm not aware of any other appeal procedure that goes to the town manager directly. Is there, is there anything that, that comes to mind? I'm just concerned about we may want to have just a generic email address as part of these waivers as opposed to having your address, Mr. Feeney, at the town manager's office. But that's, again, something, something minor. It, um, it, it does talk about mailing to the office of the town manager, but just, just having that, that out there, just you run the risk of you, you get a lot of emails and, and it may be better to have a separate location for, for appeals. Um, so I, I think we have some time here. There's been a couple of questions. I, I'll leave it to the board. We may want to think about some of these things and, and um, we could schedule this at the May 6th meeting and that will still give us time, but I'll turn to the board if, if you prefer to have a motion. Happy to consider that as well. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Fine. Mr. Biggins. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have a question because I mean, I thought you were going someplace else with your comment. Being. So you started off saying that we, you weren't aware of another process that's appealable to the town manager. And then you specified well, it was the use of his address. Was that the concern, the address, or just this, yeah, this yeah. is this like the, the only time we haven't had something appealable to the town manager and that we're setting a precedent and we should be a little more aware about that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. I mean, the guidance is is that the town manager, I think other communities are using that. So I wasn't concerned about that. I'm just okay. concerned about the receipt and, and putting an additional burden on, on just an individual email address as, a, as opposed to the office. Okay. All right. You know, because it got me thinking about whether or not we do have other processes that are appealable to town manager. And if indeed, you know, this is a precedence that we want to set, you know. So I'm just thinking about it. I don't have a problem uh, one way or another, or I don't have an issue one way or another, but you did get me thinking. And so I talked about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Um, okay, so Mr. Hurd just moved receipt of the of the uh, guidance document. Uh, Mr. Hellman? Yeah, I'll, I'll gladly second that. And I, I take Mr. Wor my colleague Mr. Hurd's words to heart. I think that, you know, we don't want to, we, we don't want to be unreasonable. We don't want to shut out businesses particularly. We really don't. Um, but I, I wouldn't mind a little more time to just contemplate the definition of commercially viable um, and maybe work with the with Ms. Fox, the town manager, uh, if that's all right, to, uh, you know, maybe propose something that would still uh, uh, give enough flexibility that would be appropriate to a pilot, appropriate to commercial development. And then bring that back soon. Yeah, that, that, that sounds great. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Any other comments? All right, so on a motion to receive by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins. Yes, I'm checking away, but stepping away a charger, get a charger. Bye bye. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 5 0 vote. Okay, and we'll work with you. I did probably May 6th, but we can talk in advance of that meeting. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr. Hurd. Okay, uh, next item 13 is a discussion local option acceptance of general laws, Chapter 203C the prudent investor rule, and um, we had moved favorable action on this, and then we learned subsequent to our action that the Finance Committee had moved no action, and so we asked uh, Mr. Feeney to, to um, come back to us with some additional information. I do note that Ms. Deschler is here as well from the Finance Committee, but I will turn it over to um, Mr. Feeney at this point. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for that background information. If I could, I would also take a moment just to acknowledge that uh, the town's treasurer, Julie Wayman, is also in attendance, as are Augusta Haydock and Angela Olszewski from the uh, Board of Commissioners of Trust Funds. Uh, so as we discussed previously, the Prudent Investor Rule, or MGL Chapter 203C, uh, is something that was instituted in August of 2023 to allow municipalities a local option to pursue application of the prudent investor rule to trust funds, which is a very specific category of funds for which the town has uh, 88 specific uh, funds that are classified as trust funds. So what this prudent investor rule does is seek to allow uh, municipalities to treat these uh, trust funds uh, or the investment of those trust funds in a manner similar to either pension funds or OPEB funds. So to provide a little bit of additional flexibility in uh, the pursuit of optimization of uh, returns. 
as presently constructed, the uh, trust funds are limited to what's called the legal list, at least on uh, the equity side of the portfolio that's limited to 22 particular uh, stocks that frankly are, are quite limiting and at least over the past year have not uh, performed well. So I believe this is something the Board of Commissioners of Trust Funds has been interested in instituting for some time. Uh, but with respect to the discussion this evening, I think what was perhaps missing from our earlier discussion is noting that if uh, you know this board and ultimately town meeting were to uh, advance and see this warrant article favorably, uh, it is the you know obviously a local adoption, but with it would come a commensurate amendment uh, to our current investment policy statement, as that would need to be revised to uh, reference the investment of trust funds and update the language to ref to refer to. Uh, the Massachusetts Prudent Investor Act. Uh, you know, following a meeting with the Finance Committee uh, earlier uh, this session in the run-up to town meeting, we were uh, fortunate, given uh, Mr. Dean Cameron's former role as a treasurer, to have him share what had been uh, the town's pre-existing uh, trust fund uh, investment policy statement, and we also have a investment policy statement from 2020 that was part of a request for proposals that uh, the town had conducted when choosing its current investment advisor, who is Rockland Trust and who began servicing, serving as our investment manager as of February 2021. So uh, we will soon be up for a renewal of that process, but with respect to the Prudent Investor Act, it would necessitate our changing or updating our current investment policy statement. So we have one specific, as I referenced, for trust funds that dates back to uh, the 2015-2016 period, and then a more generalized investment policy document that dates back to 2020. So uh, if this were to move favorably, we would pursue uh, an avenue whereby hopefully we could integrate those two investment policies and then uh, pursue a process whereby, you know, the Board of Commissioners of Trust Funds in consultation with the Treasurer and Town Manager could uh, present a revised uh, investment policy statement for uh, review and hope, uh, hopeful eventual endorsement uh, by the Finance Committee as well as the Select Board. And we would hope that that process could conclude uh, prior to and would commit to making sure that process uh, concludes prior to making any changes from uh, the legal list with respect to uh, trust funds should, of course, that option become available following a town meeting vote. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Feeney. And, and so a, as it stands now, what you would see is, is that process taking place over, hopefully over the next year. But um, and, and I'll ask if either the, the commissioners um, or the members of the board would like to to address the select board, but um, you would still, your recommendation at this point would still be favorable action, but, but there would be nothing done in reliance on the prudent investor rule until the, the, the policy is updated, is that? that? That is correct, Mr. Chair. Okay, okay. Um, all right, it, it would either members of the board of uh, commissions of trust funds wish to address the board you don't have to i just want to know if if if, if you'd like to and then I, I will ask miss deschler as well Do you want me to come up if, if you'd like to it's, it's okay fine. okay no that's fine My name's Augusta. Oh, oh yeah no if you're going to address us please come up Um, my name is Augusta Haydock, and I am the chair of the Commission for Trust Funds, the Board of Commissions. And I'd just like to say that this is something that we've been working towards for the last, probably since 2020. Um, we have always felt that the list was extremely limiting, 22 stocks as opposed to thousands that we could choose or that the investment person could choose. It would create a more diversified portfolio, hopefully mitigating whatever risk there, there is. Um, 
and hopefully providing a greater return for the benefit of the trust funds so that we as fiduciaries could achieve um, the goals of the monies that were deposited for the town's use and provide greater scholarships, provide greater um, money for the Poor Widows Fund, and uh, that this would go a long way to do, towards doing that. Okay, thank, thank you. Any, any questions? Okay, thank you very much. And, and just so we have an idea, maybe for Mr. Feeney, that the scope of what we're talking about with these, that, that the trust funds, because we're not talking about the town's pension um, funds, we're talking about separate assets. That is correct. For uh, specific questions and values, I would direct them to, if I could, our treasurer, sure. Julie Wayman. Ms. Wayman, yeah. Julie Wayman, treasurer collector. Um, I'm sorry, what was the specific question? Just the scope of the, 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 trust, the trust funds that we're talking about that oh, yeah. would be covered by the prudent investor rule if this, if this was adopted? So um, the, there are three parties that have um, the trust funds that we're talking about. So that is the uh, town scholarships. Um, we also have the school scholarships, uh, along with the library has several different um, funds as well, and the uh, cemetery commission as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the, uh, that was it on that. Now, I, I also want to point out the, the reason, again, that we're back here, and, and I think as members of the board, when someone comes and says they want you to adopt the prudent investor rule, who, who doesn't want to be a prudent investor? But it, it, when we learned of the Finance Committee's action, we felt better to have the discussion here, yeah. see if we can um, work out some things before we go to town meeting. So with that, unless there are any questions for Ms. Wayman, I'll ask Ms. Deschler to Maybe come up and just let us know about the uh, action the Finance Committee took uh, in their vote and in their discussion. Thank you. Good evening, Ms. Deschler. I am Christine Deschler and Chair of the Finance Committee. Um, first of all, uh, let me say that the Finance Committee voted unanimously a no action vote here. We completely support the idea of Arlington at some point moving off the legal list. There is a consensus, I think there's agreement across the board on that. The issue is, for us, what's the rush? Um, this statute has, is only eight months old. Uh, does, uh, there's no track record by any mis municipality for this. Do we want to be a pioneer here? Um, we would prefer that we take a more plodding, thoughtful approach, which would be let's update our investment policy that reflects the ability to move off the list first. And then uh, got, using that as guidance, work with our existing investment manager or get another one, um, and then have the treasurer do um, her responsibility in rolling this out as she seems, deems fit. But at this point, we're thinking, what's the rush? What's the rush here? Um, these funds are supposed to outlast us all. So I think it's um, uh, reasonable to take our time and be more thoughtful about this. And if we have an investment policy that we can all agree on, um, I think there's a bigger comfort level. And I think there's also a, a better um, support for the treasurer and for the commissioners and for the town manager when the market go south, which it will do. Um, but for them to be able to say, we were thoughtful, we were prudent, we developed a uh, investment policy that reflected the ability to go off the list and we went off the list in the way that was anticipated and, and that's, this is what happens. I think it would be safer all around for the town if we develop the policy first. Okay, um, any questions for, for Ms. Deschler? I just have a question in general, maybe not, not for you, just on the investment policy and anybody who can answer it. Who in the ordinary course approves the investment policy and, and updates the investment policy? I mean, um, is, it the, is it the Board of Commissioners and just solely there? Or um, would, if, if there's any history, 
that can be provided. Mr. Mr. Feeney. A, a, a fine question, Mr. Chair. What, one I had asked myself in reviewing both the 2016 and 2020 policies, they were both technically approved by the treasurer or collector. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so, so this was uh, Mr. Diggins. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, so um, Ms. Dessler, so let's say we do the work that you uh, proposed that we do um, before um, in relaxing um, or ch making a change in, but Arlington would still be the first one to do it. Would the finance committee have a problem with that? Because I asked because your comments seem to indicate you want to see others do it so as to get a sense of the track record and how it's working before we do it. I, I, I can't speak for the committee. Uh, I think there will be members who would prefer that we step back and let this play out, but I, I don't think anyone can agree on how long a period that would be. Uh, do, we, do we sit back for five years, 10 years, one year, two months? Would, um, I think, the, I think that is, that's what's driving the desire to have an investment policy because uh, we can absolutely understand why we should be moving off the legal list, um, but we want to be thoughtful about it. Um, we don't necessarily have to have to wait for other municipalities, so long as we have an investment policy that the town feels comfortable with. Okay. Thank you very much. That's helpful. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, um, Ms. Deshwar, and thank you to the Finance Committee for for exercising your your due diligence with this. I think it's, it's an important check and balance to the town and I don't want to minimize that in any way. Um, did, did you have a sense, I know you, the committee talked a lot about the risk. Um, what was the reward side of that discussion like? And I guess I'm thinking um, about the opportunity cost there might be in you know, not doing this if there's a potential for greater returns, for instance. And can you give me a sense for the Finance Committee's views on on weighing the risk versus the reward, and maybe was there any attempt to sort of quantify what what the reward could be for doing it? I, I, I don't think we could quantify it. I, I've, I've, what I can say is that we shouldn't be chasing the market right now, mm. that these are very long-term funds. As I said, they sh these should outlive us all. Um, so um, trying to implement this very quickly to get a year's worth of returns Assuming that the market continues to go up, um, it market could go down in two six months. Um, so um, it, it'd be, I think it'd be impossible to quantify what the upside and downside would be monetarily. Um, and again, that brings me back to if we had an investment policy that we're comfortable with, whether the market goes up or down, we can at least say we follow the policy. Yeah, thank you. That's very thoughtful. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Hamlet. Just a, a further question on, and I, I just want to get my arms around, okay, what, where the differences are here and, and, and what needs to be done and, and or, you know, per, per the Finance Committee vote. And one of the things that's in the comment in, in the Finance Committee report is that the, the Finance Committee recommends that the investment policy with respect to these funds be updated, but then there's a further, some further language and further oversight added. Now, I see a situation where the, the town treasurer may update the investment policy, and if that was done um, before town meeting, I, I, I can see that issue being addressed. But as far as the further oversight, what was the nature of that discussion in terms of beyond the investment policy? Uh, it's interesting that in the uh, 2000, uh, what is it, 2019 policy statement and the 2020 policy statement has slight um, differences over uh, with regard to what type of um, uh, review that the trust fund commissioners have, the cemetery commissioners have, how often they get reports. The 2020 policy, say, I think, refers to reports going to the town manager, which I think the finance committee would be very comfortable with. But, um, but there should be um, additional um, defined oversight or review by the various 
commissioners of the various trust funds. Okay. And again, that something that could be um, defined and outlined in a policy statement. Okay. Um, thank you. And Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> I have a rookie novice financial investment is not my background question. Um, so a scenario. Could the scenario ex exist that um, we decide and are successful in passing this local option and acceptance of this mass general law and we also have to take the 2015 2020 uh, investment statements along with what the trust commissioners and the town treasurer has to do say that process takes one to three years at the outset or say it takes one year i guess what my question would be is, what my question is is if we do accept the local option and, and town meeting does pass it does that preclude us do we automatically have to say okay we're, we're getting off the list everything has to be defined and it's done or can we take this step and if it does take one two three years um, we have that ability to do that so I'm, 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 I will admit I'm not completely well versed on <coughs> chapter what 203C so I, I don't know if my question in there was clear and if who would be appropriate to answer that um, Mr. Feeney do you want to uh, I think thank you Mrs. Mahan one question uh, how I would answer that question is in fact you know, if the local option were adopted, it would then put the town in a position to revise and amend its investment policy statement to incorporate the adoption of the prudent investor rule with respect to trust funds. That means that the, the prudent investor rule already exists for any municipality anywhere for how they mish, may wish to invest their OPEB, OPEB funds and if they are investing their own pension funds. You know, the, the town of Arlington has moved everything to PRIT, but a number of municipalities directly manage those investments with investment managers like Rockland or whomever they choose, and for which there are portfolios that are already governed by the prudent investor rule. So if we were to adopt this locally, we could then conceivably begin that process of updating our investment policy statement for trust funds specifically to incorporate those new rules, you know, go through a, you know, as robust a process as possible to get uh, input and consensus from all stakeholders. And only then, once we have that revised policy statement, would we be able to provide it to our uh, investment manager and potentially change, uh, you know, course of action with how the investments are currently being managed. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Diggins. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair, so, so am I hearing you correct, Mr. Um, uh, manager, that, that we can't give me FinCom what it wants I mean, unless we adopt this local option? We can't update the, um, our investment policy I mean, to include this until, until we I mean, like, approve the local option? Uh, Mr. Feeney? Uh, you know, technically, Mr. Diggins, I, we could potentially approve something in a draft form, but it, yeah. it could not be part of our policy unless we move acceptance of the local option. The next step is then to revise and amend your investment policy statement. That's the guidance that's being provided to uh, municipalities by both investment managers, but also the, uh, the association for city and town treasurer collectors okay because thank you thank you so that that's helpful at the same time a, a little bit confusing about how to move forward here because i mean we're as that we, we all kind of feel the tension here i mean no one i think really wants to see I mean, the fincom and the select board on opposite sides I mean going you know to the town meeting i was beginning to wonder like did we mess up the sequencing you know i mean should we have gone to to fincom first 
on this, but now the, your, your, your response to me, what you proposed, um, Mr. Manager, makes me think that we did things correctly. Um, so um, I'm having a little hard time here deciding what to do, but I'll, I'll um, just stop now and listen to any other questions and comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think in response to Mr. Diggins' concerns and perhaps in furtherance to the answer to Ms. Mrs. Mahan's question, adoption of this local option would not require the investors of these funds to act in any particular manner initially. It's simply a tool that the investors could use. If you look at the language of Chapter 44, Section 54, a city or town you know, may manage trust funds, may invest according, according with those options. So just because we, if the, if the town, if town meeting were to adopt the local option, um, that just presents additional options and tools for those who are managing the funds, additional potential diverse, um, you know, different, different funds other than the legal list that we've been referring to. Uh, there'd be no requirement that the, those in charge of managing those funds act upon that immediately. Can I, can I just add or respond to that? <coughs> Obviously there's a pressure to move off the legal list. I mean, this, the statute was passed in six, eight months ago. We've heard the commissioners, uh, as it's their responsibility to do so, to argue for more investment, um, diversity, power. There clearly is an urge here to move off the legal list as soon as possible. I, 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 I think we have to acknowledge that. Um, knowing that, and that, knowing that there's no requirement that the treasurer stay on the legal list is why the Finance Committee would prefer to have an investment policy set, even if it's a contingent policy written in, in, the, in, in the way of when, if and when the town adopts this statute, this is the policy we're going to follow. Um, I think that would be an appropriate uh, way to approach this problem. Um, and again, I, I, I think that's a, it's a prudent thing to do. There, there, there is this urge to get off the legal list, and I think we have to acknowledge that, and I think we have to be mindful that um, we have sufficient um, safeguards in place for when we do that. Okay, thank you, Mr. I, and I would say, I mean, the statute is available now, so whether it was, you could say the urge, the statute's on the books and the option's available to adopt, the prudent investor rule. I mean, what we're hearing is, is frustration that has been built up over years in terms of mm -hmm. the limitations um, from from the list here. So I I I, I hear what you're saying in terms of uh, you know, what, what you perceive as an urgency, but I also see when a statute's passed and there's a local option created, I don't necessarily when someone comes before us to to approve the local option once it's available. Um, it, it, it it's not like the, they're coming in ahead of um, the enactment of, the, of, of this rule saying we must do it, we, the, 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 it's not even in law yet. But we, we can, I, I think at the end of the day, as the other members have said, we all want to do the right thing and, and have the right policy for, for important funds that we want to last for a long time. It's just a matter of, it's really a timing issue right now in terms of where the Finance Committee is and what we're hearing from Mr. Feeney and, and from the Board of Commissioners and, and from the Treasurer. Um, I did see a couple of hands up here. Uh, Mr. Hurd first and then Mr. Helmuth. Yeah, thank you. I'm trying to absorb the discussions and see where I land on this, but I mean, I think in the one sense, we always want to have our town committees and boards in unison, but sometimes it just happens. And we vote one way and the finance committee votes another way, um, and that's okay. I mean, that's democracy in action. action. I always, def for me, I defer to, I mean, I think we hire great staff. I think we've always had great administrators that run our finance department, and I trust that they will do what's in the best interest of the town and I mean I'm leaning towards just keeping the vote that we had initially just because it's another tool in the tool belt and again I trust the individuals that are making the decisions and if this gives them a little more leeway then I mean I think it's only a positive I don't anticipate that all of a sudden you know we'll be taking risky investments as a way to try to jump ahead of the market, I, I, I think it will just, it, if there's an option that's not on the legal list, that is a very safe and you know, 
low risk type of commodity and they want to use it for the betterment of the town, I'd like to, them to have that option. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think I know the answer to this, but it, through you, if I could inquire from Attorney Cunningham, um, the select board's option, so to speak, for accepting the local option, is it just a binary yes or no? And I guess, you know, if we wanted to, could we build in a delay or a condition, you know, a delay every year or a condition of a, of a, uh, of a investment policy being approved? Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, that is not an option. Yeah. And, and through you to the town manager, um, and, you, and apologies if you said this before, supposing town meeting were to approve this, what, in, in your best judgment, uh, would you think it would be the soonest that, that the, tre the treasurer or these boards might take advantage of this and, and, and consider moving off the list? Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, what I would say in response to that, it, you know, first, if I could, I would just like to acknowledge I really appreciate the care and attention that the Finance Committee uh, gave to this warrant article. And I think that they are indeed correct that we need to pursue both an updated and an integrated investment policy statement that reconciles both the specific trust fund policy statement from 2016 as well as the more uh, generalized investment policy statement from 2020 that talks about all other monies on deposit. So what I would say is even if the local option were adopted, I would be committed to not necessarily moving off the legal list unless and until we had the updated investment policy statement as reviewed and approved by the uh, commissioners of Board of Trust Funds, but also the Finance Committee, as well as the Select Board. And one other thing I would consider, too, with respect to knowing that we are due for uh, a renewal of our investment manager contract, I suspect that would be going out uh, to bid at the current rate sometime around the turn of the calendar year. Uh, and during that process, it's an RFP process and you would get uh, proposals to be scored. I would, you know, propose a panel of folks to score those proposals and help choose uh, the new investment manager to be comprised not only of individuals from the Board of Trust Fund Commissioners, but the cemetery and library who have significant amount of money on deposit, but you know, delegates from both the Finance Committee uh, and the Select Board in pursuit of choosing our new investment manager. And at that point, once that contract is issued, I could see that being the appropriate time to provide the town's updated and revised investment policy statement, uh, which if we looked at if town meeting were to approve this and it received uh, attorney general uh, approval, you know, sometime in the fall that would give anywhere, and I guess nothing would preclude that process from starting even today with respect to revising the policy, but, you know, from now until about the end of the year would make sense to sort of disseminate a new investment policy uh, statement to either our current investment manager or a new investment manager based on the results of that competitive procurement. Thank you. So, um, if you can just confirm that I heard you right, that you you would be committing, promising, you know, to if, if you had this tool available, that you wouldn't use it or, or exercise it until there was an investment policy that was approved by including the finance committee. Correct. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Attorney, Cunningham. Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to. I think my answer to Mr. Helmuth's question was a little bit incomplete. I think although they can't build in a delay, if uh, you know, there's no requirement in this local option that the town do this this year. Right. Yeah. Thank, 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 thank you, Attorney Cunningham. And, and just before, I think we're just about to the conclusion of this discussion, and I want to thank Ms. Deschel for, for coming in tonight. For those of you in the public wondering why do we have two competing recommendations here, for town meeting purposes, the select board vote is what will be before town meeting because there's no appropriation. However, the, town, the Finance Committee has discretion to select articles to comment or to take votes on because this deals with the investment of funds. The, the Finance Committee exercise their discretion to, to uh, take action. So the select board recommendation will be there, perfectly appropriate for the Finance Committee to do it, I think, in the future. Um, I'm glad we had this discussion now as opposed to 
opening up each other's reports down at town meeting uh, when, when this happened. I, I think it, it's good to have the discussion ahead of time. I'm glad we had it. Maybe it would have been a little bit better to have a little earlier, but that's not, that's, that's just the way these things work as we go through the process. So I wanted to lay that out. I, I think what I'm hearing, unless I hear a motion from the board, where we are right now is we've made our recommendation. So unless there's a motion to reconsider that, the, the vote will be as it's in the draft report. Um, I think there's some additional things to consider from the discussion here, but um, if there's no motion from the board, um, I think I'll conclude this agenda item. I do see Mr. Diggins' uh, yeah. hand up, so. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm not gonna make a motion to uh, change things, uh, but I will say you know, it, that it's gonna be really confusing for the town meeting members if we're not uh, on the same page in, uh, on this, you know, and you explained to why, you know, the sequencing was correct. I mean, so it was appropriate that it comes down, that this came before select board, um, before um, FinCom reported on it. But it, um, I just, I mean, if there's any way that we can get the two boards, I mean, on the same page, I mean, before um, town meeting, even if it's just a presentation, I mean, uh, uh, when the article comes up, uh, um, by both um, the you, Mr. Chair, and, and the Chair of FIMCOM, I mean, giving town meeting like clear guidance, I mean, on what to do. It's just going to be really hard for the town meeting members to know um, what to do and to feel confident in in their vote. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. And, and I agree. I mean, there's there's a fair amount of time. I mean, reports are out, right, and votes have been taken, and and that part's over. But there is a fair amount of time between now and and, and town meeting, and and. I think it makes sense to, to, to have, you know, we've learned some things tonight, um, and, and I think you know, certainly steps I will take between now and, and the start of town meeting based on what I've heard here tonight, and maybe there's a way to, to reach some sort of consensus or compromise that would allow both bodies to go back. Maybe there isn't, but I think we are where we are right now, and I appreciate the discussion. May I add one comment, sure. uh, Mr. Chair? Um, our vote is, should not be taken as a reflection on any lack of confidence that we have in our um, officials. Uh, quite the contrary. We have the utmost faith in our treasurer, um, utmost faith, faith in the chair of the trust commissioners who I had breakfast with this morning, utmost faith in the town manager. Uh, what we are thinking, however, is that these are people who may leave, who will not be with us forever. Um, and that is why we would like to see something in writing so that the next treasurer, the next town manager, the next, next chair, the trust commissioners have guidance that we're, we are comfortable with. Great. Thank, thank, thank you for those comments. Thank, um, okay. So I think that concludes that. Again, it was a, it was a discussion. I think it was a good discussion. Um, and we, we move on to the next agenda item, uh, which is item 14, discussion and approval of the draft select board report to town meeting. Uh, Attorney Cunningham and Attorney Munson had updated us over the weekend and even earlier today with draft language. And I'll ask Attorney Cunningham, do you, at this point, uh, we, would you be looking for a vote just on the entire document? Or, or um, do you want us to go back to the, um, our votes from the last meeting that we might not have voted specific language? Just whatever your recommendation is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd be looking for a vote on the entire document, but if there are particular articles and comments that board members have concerns or if they want revisions, um, I could take those into account prior to the vote and then uh, the vote could be subject to those revisions and those could be made in advance of printing if the board is inclined to move favorable action after those revisions are accounted for. Okay, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Uh, Mr. Diggins, I see your hand up. Yes, me. So I did have a revision of what I wanted to make to the last paragraph I mean, for um, Article 14, where it refers to um, my comments. First, I want to um, once again praise um, Mr. Um, Cunningham and Ms. Bunsen on, on a great job on on um, me, me pulling it all together, me, uh, especially that discussion. Me. And so me, I don't know if Ms. Meyer is in a position to pull up me, the PDF me, that I sent so that people could read me, my revision to that last paragraph. Uh, are you, Ms. Meyer? Yeah, just if you just give me one minute, I'll be sure. able to pull that up. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, you're with me.
aristocracy. I think the eclipse got to your computer. <laughs> well, I'll explain why this is coming so late. It does have to do with the eclipse, Mr. Mr. Manager. Why I'm in Buffalo. Okay. Can you see that, Mr. Diggins? Or? Yes, yes, I can. It's more for, for my colleagues, you know, so, so I'm just so they can read it so that they don't then see the, the change and go, wow. Well, I wasn't signing up on that, you know. Uh, in, in Mr. Diggins, just for clarification for the other members, this, this is a, you'd like to see this replace the last paragraph in our right. comment? Yes. Okay. Um, if you could just give us a moment. Yeah, so I understand. Look at it. Um, and again, this it, when we we do have a situation where we have a, a, a divided vote, um, we, we do allow the you know we insert that that, that the comments of the, the, the individuals voting in the negative or, or um, positively if, if 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 it's a negative vote. Um, I, any comments on Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. I think I'm. I'm reading where you're going. I think I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to allow uh, to to give the dissenting member their voice. I might have a stylistic suggestion, much as we uh, are avoiding strong language and urges. Perhaps exclamation points might that also be, might yes. also be something best uh, best uh, omitted at this juncture, just for stylistic consistency under yeah. the new regime. I was going to yes. say that. Thank, thank you. I mean, it's funny. I, mean, you know, I think it's more of a typo than anything else. I, mean, I was looking at that and saying, did I put an L there? It's like, oh, that's an exclamation point. You know, I, think to, I think to just reflect how I felt, but yes, I agree. Let me take that out and also let me fix the, the deeply held view and change that to views. You know, so, okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggs. Mr. Mr. Helmuth had a couple of urges he was going to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> comment if, if the exclamation point stayed. So that's, that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, any other, um, Mrs. Mahan? Oh, no, I was going okay. actually, when it's motion time, that's all. Okay, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Since we're, we're copy editing um, as a group, which is ever so fun, um, I found one more typo since we're doing this at the last minute. Other ways to protect, I believe there's a, the, the word to has a P there, should be an O. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. that's called bad vision. That looks. That still looks like an O to me, Eric. <laughs> so, I'm assuming it's so, 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 so. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even bother. But I know this is going to press in the morning. And I, yeah. No. 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 I appreciate that. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Chair. I think the town manager just raised. Uh, Mr. Feeney. If I could, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it should be. Several legal decisions have determined mm -hmm. that we can pass this bylaw yes. as opposed to determine. Thank you. I love portsmouthing. Attorney Cunningham. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It appears the word constitutionality is also uh, could be spelled differently. Mr. Diggins, did you spell your name right? Did you get that? Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I spell was, check. Take care of the rest. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I was. I he, he, this this um. You should see the timestamp on this. All right. <laughs> so, so. That's all things. I just want you. I want you to read it. You know, I didn't want to wait until I had a chance to review it a, a couple of times, because then I would miss a chance for you to read it. Because I really wanted to make sure that you were fine with the tone of it. You know, uh, I felt that I got it to reflect how I felt and what came across in the meeting. But I just really wanted to make sure you all were okay with it instead. Of just yeah, that's it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. Yeah, to, to further Mr. Diggins' point about the, the timeline of this, I'd just like to note also for the public that Article 14 was one of the five that the board had limited time to review. It was Article 14, Article 20, obviously, that was taken up tonight, Articles 21, 22, and 53. Um, so just, just for the public, the board was under a tight timeline on all those articles. Thank, thank, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. And I just had one. It was a minor thing that I it contacted Attorney Cunningham about in, in Articles a six in the vacant storefront maintenance registry. I, I had made a comment 
during the hearing um, referencing Chapter 121B. That had made it into the comment, and it didn't really have anything to do with our vote. It did, I did say it, but I, I just felt that, that our vote was to, to approve the changes, and so I did ask that that be removed um, just, just to eliminate any potential confusion in terms of what we're addressing. Um, if there are any other um, potential changes, if not, I think we may be ready for motions on the, on the, on the report. Mr. Helmuth? I move to approve subject to the revisions uh, discussed. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Any further discussion? Okay, on a motion to approve by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Cunningham? Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 5 0 vote. Thank, thank you. And again, thank you, Attorney Cunningham and Attorney Munson, for your work. This is a very tight time frame given the timing of our hearings, and we really appreciate the effort uh, since last meeting and, and throughout the Warren article season. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With your indulgence, I just want to thank Attorney uh, Munson one more time. She did a lot of work on these materials throughout the, the Warren article seasons. It's been a real benefit to have Attorney Munson on board this, uh, this season. Great. Thank you. Um, all right, we are on to new business. Except in cases of emergency, the board will neither deliberate nor act upon topics presented in new business. Uh, Ms. Marr? No new business, thank you. Attorney Cunningham? No new business, thank you. Ms. Defini? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, given that we've moved quickly tonight, I would like to offer some new business. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to welcome a few new employees to town staff. Uh, from the month of March, we've hired Steve Bazarian as the new local building inspector. Uh, Sean Daly is the new project manager in the facilities department. Uh, Nick Doan as an electrician within the facilities department and Tyler Shaw as a custodian in the facilities department. And while we're happy to add some employees, I do want to note that we did actually have a couple of retirements in March as well. I want to give thanks to Tim Devlin of Public Works who has since retired, uh, Eddie Seville from the Arlington Police Department, as well as Willie Smith, also from the Arlington Police Department, our uh, beloved park and control officer. Really? So th those folks all uh, retired in the month of March. And then uh, I would also like to let the board know that the Arlington Community Electricity uh, bid is, we're, we're in the contracting process right now. It does look like we'll be moving forward with a new supplier, which will be Direct Energy Services. Uh, for a term of December 2024 through December of 2026. Uh, and as the, at the board's direction, we were able to achieve a default product that will contain 100% total class one RECs. Uh, the new default product will be approximately one cent cheaper than the current default product, which has only an additional 30% of uh, class one RECs. Uh, and I will further note that the basic product will be about two and a half cents cheaper than the current basic product. So these are uh, favorable results and for your meeting on uh, the 17th, we will endeavor to have a uh, more in-depth memo codifying uh, the contract once it's finalized for the board's uh, review. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think just one item of new business um, that the um, Save the Al White Brook, members of Save the Al White Brook, as well as members of town staff, starting with the manager on down, have been very uh, diligent in terms of the CSO issue down in the Al White and uh, representing Arlington with the various different uh, stakeholders with MWRA, City of Cambridge, City of Somerville. Um, but as we all know, there is a meeting tomorrow night um, at 7 p.m. Zoom meeting that uh, the vested groups have gotten the Mass DEP Department of um, Environmental Protection where they're going to take public testimony with a three-minute limit each, uh, for each person to speak. Um, I don't know that Mass DEP, I assume they're going to have some sort of introductory remarks and the like, but what's really important about this is, as we all know, is um, it, it's been sort of uh, swimming upstream, fighting an uphill battle uh, in terms of uh, the MWRA 
and the C uh, CSO issue along with the cities of some of them in Cambridge, although I will say I am encouraged that the landscape 10, 15 years ago with um, the, the city of Cambridge and most extreme recently with the city of Somerville has changed and, and everyone seems to acknowledge, I don't know if it's climate control or whatever, but has, has acknowledged the problem. One of the things I've been frustrated by is MWRA, in my personal opinion, not the town or anyone else's opinion, um, is seems to be taking the position that to do what people are asking to uh, do in terms of the CSOs in Al Wife Brook, which then continues on downstream, is a $22 billion project, which is not the case. So um, I would just encourage, you know, if any of my colleagues can, can zoom in tomorrow night, I'm going to, but um, I'm assuming that there'll be some representatives from the town um, who I'm going to try not to speak just because they'll be like, here she comes again. They know what I'm going to say. Uh, but I will be there. In so uh, I'll be at a list of attendees. But um, I'm, I'm uh, assuming we will, uh, whether it's uh, Ms. Bongiorno or Wayne Chenard or Dave Morgan or anyone else. Um, I know members of Save Their Wife Brook, which also have some crossover, Jean Benson, David White, um, and I'm going to miss out on the names, will be there. But um, if any of my colleagues zoom in and want to give the three minutes, please go ahead and don't take my not speaking. I will be there, but um, I think it's good. Um, I, oh, the spirit may move me that I end up do saying something at the very, very end, but um, I think new voices uh, carry a stronger message. So um, the Zoom invite is out. It's tomorrow night at 7 p.m., and it really is a coup that the town and, and Save the Ally Brook um, got the Mass Dep Department of Environmental Protection because if they come out with conditions, that's it. It has to be something. And this is one of the few openings that we actually have some relief um, for something that ha has to be done versus anything else. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The only thing I would note in new business is, uh, to my pleasure, I saw uh, uh, today, I believe, that the uh, town announced that the annual report is now online, and I want to express my appreciation for the enormous team effort that that is every year, uh, but led by the town manager, but all the departments, and then the school department as well. Um, it is a document well worth reading. It's on the town website. And Mr. Uh, Feeney, perhaps you could verify, will there be printed reports again this year? There will again be some printed reports available. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. I had been planning to do this new business for a while with my tri corner hat on, but I was at the rink before and I forgot. So maybe next year. Um, this is finally coming our Arlington Patriots Day week. We're trying to figure out how to word that, but I think Patriots. Day week was the best we could do. Um, we have a number of events that, that are coming up this week. The Tavern Week starts on Wednesday, and that's just local businesses that are participating, having you know colonial themed events. And um, so the Monotomy Tavern, Town Tavern, Arlington Brewery at Rosa Granola, and Trist are all reached out to they want to participate. So that will start on Wednesday, and you can look for that all week. Um, we have a beer hall at Town Hall on Saturday. That will be hosted by Monotomy Tavern as well. That should be a really good event. We we're trying to do some outside events, but you know, given the weather that was nice today, snowed three days ago, we figured an indoor beer hall would be the uh, most appropriate event. Um, Jason Russell House is doing tours on Saturday and on Patriots Day. The big event is the reenactment. Um, so that will go from Grove Street to Medford Street. Just notes to people that um, Mass Ave will be shut down for a pretty good period on Sunday afternoon to, for the reenactment, but it, it's, it's gonna be fun. It's been a, a ton of work to put this together. A lot of people um, on the committee, Angela, who was here earlier, Chrissy Bongiorno, Katie Lozai have been working with the reenactors. The, there is really 
an incredible amount of work that goes into an event like this that you, you don't always see when you're at the event. But it should be very, with the conversations we've had with the reenactors, they're very into it, and I think it will be in really an incredible sight to see. It's meant to be historic, historically accurate to the actual battle that occurred in Arlington um, at the time. So it will be a fun event for everyone, especially the kids. Um, and then we'll do our normal Paul Revere ride on Patriot's Day. So there's no, I had mentioned at a previous meeting, a potential beer garden on Patriot's Day as well, but we're, we're just doing the beer hall on Saturday. So again, it's a whole week of events. Um, this is the precursor to the, the bigger celebration next year in 2025. I do want to thank our sponsor. So the whole, whole week of events is being presented by Leader Bank. Um, so they've given us a, some significant financial support in order to put, you know, there's a lot of, lot of moving parts in an event like this, and it does get expensive. So I do want to thank Leader Bank for stepping up and, and presenting the, the Patriots Day Week celebration. Um, and so that's it. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hurd, hey, let me know where to get one of those tricorner hats. I, mean, uh, I think I'd like to wear one, too. Got my and, uh, <laughs> okay, all right, good, good, that's easy. And, and, and um, this one um, is coming from, um, from my partner who um, expresses deep appreciation hey, for everything you know, that we do to make it possible for these remote meetings. I mean, uh, um, I'm in a hotel meeting in Buffalo. Uh, because we went there to see the, the eclipse, which was on his bucket list. He, um, he's the sentimental one in the relationship, so he really wanted to be there. Uh, with him, he knew, though, that if I couldn't connect about this meeting, I wasn't going to go because this is a, um, I mean, this is a, a very high priority, you know, and so, so uh, we're very appreciative. We ended up going uh, to a place called Geneva on the Lake because uh, it ended up getting cloudy um, in Niagara, and that was quite the experience, you know, and I have to say totality is what people uh, make it out to be. It was really impressive, I mean, he's, and he, he was so happy, you know, so, and I'm happy to do that with him and to be here with you all, too, so thanks once again for all the effort that goes into making these meetings be as accessible as they are. That's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. That's impressive being in the path of totality there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just have a brief update. Um, earlier this spring, we had approved a request from the Arlington Land Trust to install two monitoring wells in the right of way on Dorothy Road near the Mugar Wetlands, near the proposed Thorndike Place development. One of the reasons we allowed that is there had been a request of the applicant to install monitoring wells. And at the time I had reported to the board that they had resisted those efforts. Um, last week, the Conservation Commission had a meeting and at that meeting, the applicant agreed to install monitoring wells. So that was a big development in that matter. We'll see you know, what happens and where they're installed. But that was the reason the, the land trust came to us um, to, to get some information off of the site these monitoring wells, which before had just been test pits and only measuring at one point in time, um, there was finally agreement to install that, to, to get the best information, as we said, for the most critical issue down at that site. So I wanted to report that to the board and to the public. Um, that is all I have for new business. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Oh, no, motion to adjourn for Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, please. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 5 0 vote. Thank you. Now you're ready. Good night, everyone. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.